hello, and welcome to yet another tutorial from Software How-Tos about using GIMP. Let's open up GIMP to a white s square. So, in order to explain this net set of tools, which are the transform tools, I need to have a floating selection over the background. So, in order to get that, we need a shape over a transparent background, so it doesn't have to be shape any object. So, copy that, control C, and paste it, control V, on the white canvas. So now you have what GIMP calls a floating selection. Right here it says floating selection. So this is just basically a hovering object over the background. So let's start with the first tool, which is a line. This just aligns your object to wherever you want it to go. The left, middle, the right, up, middle, down, whatever. And it distributes it. And there is also the offset x-axis and y-axis. So, next tool is the move tool. Normally you wouldn't need to use this tool, but for if from some instance you're using some tool over here and you want to quickly be able to move it, for example I'm using this, and I want to quickly be able to move this object, then I can just press M, and I'm on the move tool, and now I can move this object. If you're using the box select tool, then it automatically switches to the move tool when you hover over a floating selection. So normally you wouldn't have to use that tool. The next tool is crop. Crop does what any phone would do to the image you want to crop it. It just crops. You do the selection, and then you click in the center of it, and it crops. You can also adjust the position and the size with the numbers over here. So the next tool is Rotate. Shortcut is Shift-R. So you can either drag the shape to rotate it, or if you want more precision, you can type in the exact angle up here. And you can change the center, the X and Y axis over here. So once you're done, you click Rotate, and then it rotates your object. Pretty simple. So the Scale tool makes it easy to scale your floating selection. Say, for instance, that you want your floating selection to keep the same aspect ratio. Well, in that case, all you have to do is zoom out a bit here, just hold shift, and drag on one of the corners, and it keeps the same ratio, so it's the exact same shape, but just a little bigger or a little smaller. That is the scale tool. Once you're done, you click scale. You can also adjust the width and height up here. And that is your scaled image, your shape. Next tool is the Shear tool. This shears the layer selection or path. This tool normally you would not use if you're just creating something simple, so I'm not going to go in depth with this tool, but what it does is it shears. Like, issue. Perspective. This changes the perspective of the layer selection or path. Now, this tool is awesome because it makes it like your uh, floating selection is 3D. So if you drag on one of these corners, look at that, you're looking at it from this view. Let's make it, let's put it on a flat surface. Sure. Zoom out. Look at that, it's on a somewhat flat surface and you're looking straight at it. So the perspective tool is great for changing a 2D shape into not exactly a 3D shape, but it's still 2D, but you can change the perspective where you're looking at it. So you click transform once you're done, and look at that. It's changed. Let's move back to the box select tool, which automatically changes to the move tool, and there's our change perspective of the shape. Next tool up is Unified Transform, Shift-T. So this tool is almost the same as the perspective tool, except it's a little different and it gives a lot more options. So it also is the um, scale tool, except it's a little different, and it can also change the perspective. It's just tad differences. Um, this also changes the perspective of the little diamond. Just tinker around with it and change the perspective of your shape. Also, in the tool options menu, there's more options here to for more precision, but if you just 
want to use these up here, it's much easier to do that. So click transform when you are done. Next is the handle transform. So it's basically the same thing as the unified transform, it just does it a little bit differently. There's not a huge difference. Next tool up is flip. Now this tool I found very useful if I'm creating some sprite or asset for a game and I want to flip it, like if a player's holding it one way and he turns around, I want to flip it. So it's up here, these two arrows, watch what it does. You click, and it flips the image. Found that very useful, instead of having to use one of the transform tools through to flip it and then trying to keep the same aspect ratio, this tool is much easier to use. And also in the options here, you can change um, how it flips, either horizontally or vertically. So vertically would be like that. So that tool is very useful. Next tool up is the cage transform tool. This tool transforms your floating selection. So you first start by making a little box around it, and then now you can transform it this way, and it completely warps the image. So once you're done with that, just click here on the box select tool, and it's completely changed the colors around there. There's also more options here for more accuracy in the tool options menu. Alright, so the final tool we have here is the warp transform, another transform tool. This tool transforms the object by just dragging on it with the mouse cursor, and it just warps the object. So one thing I want to point out before I'm done with this video is you can just right click on the floating selection over here and do any of the things I said before over here. You can scale it or delete it, that's how you delete it, or you can just use the delete key which is faster. And one thing about the scaling is a little different, it doesn't actually give you the option to drag on it and make it bigger or smaller, it just gives you the width and the height options and then the quality. Say I want it a bit bigger. Same aspect ratio. And like that, it's a little bigger. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it interesting. And please do not forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.